This is a quick comment regarding ST depression during exercise stress EKG. This is an EKG at peak exercise. And you can see that there is an upsloping ST depression in the inferior and lateral leads. It is upsloping as opposed to the horizontal or downsloping ST depression. Upsloping ST depression is a negative result by itself and does not make the stress EKG response abnormal. However, it is a slowly upsloping ST depression, particularly in the inferior leads. Slowly upsloping means when measured at 80 milliseconds from the J point, which is where we measure the depth of ST depression during stress EKG, when measured at 80 milliseconds from the J point, that ST depression is still two millimeter or more. This is what we call a slow upsloping ST depression. For horizontal or downsloping ST depression, one millimeter is the cutoff for significance. For the upsloping ST depression, there is no cutoff for significance, but two millimeter is the cutoff for being concerned. It is a slow upsloping in the inferior leads, about two millimeter in the inferior leads and about one millimeter in V5 and V6. This is a slightly more concerning, but it's still negative by itself. How do you decide if this upsloping ST depression is ischemic? The most important thing to look at is EKG at one minute of recovery. Most importantly, when upsloping ST depression is ischemic, and sometimes it is, it will become horizontal or downsloping and more clearly significant in the first three minutes of recovery. Conversely, benign ST depression quickly recovers or attenuates within the first one to three minutes of recovery. So I ask here, what is the EKG at one minute of recovery? And this is the EKG at one minute of recovery. It has already significantly improved. And if you measure the ST depression at 80 millisecond of the J point, even in the inferior lead, it's less than one millimeter. And certainly less than one millimeter in the lateral leads. And this is the EKG at two minutes. It has even improved furthermore and it's certainly no longer significant. And keep in mind in general that beside the fact that upsloping is a non-specific finding, ST depression that is a predominant or exclusive in the inferior lead is also non-specific. You really want horizontal or downsloping ST depression in V5 to be significant for ischemia, and it has to be persistent at one minute of recovery, preferably three minutes of recovery. Even downsloping ST depression of over one or two millimeters that abates at one minute of recovery and becomes less than a millimeter is not significant for ischemia. And keep in mind that ST depression, unlike ST elevation, does not localize ischemia and often occurs and is most specific in lead V5 regardless of whether ischemia is anterior or inferior. This is similar to the explanation I provided under my non-STEMI PCI talk. Basically, the apex having the largest myocardial mass and repolarizing earlier than the rest of the LV, including the base of the LV, the current of ST depression injury toward that injured sub-endocardium often originates from the apex leading to ST depression in V4, V6, even in inferior ischemia. Even in inferior subendocardial ischemia, the vector of ST depression coming from that large apex and enteroapex is larger than the small vector coming from the subepicardial inferior myocardium. Therefore, the ST depression is more pronounced in those V4, V6 leads. And this is the bottom line summary. ST depression is more definitely ischemic when it is horizontal or downsloping in lead V5 more than the inferior leads and seen at one minute of recovery definitely and preferably at three minutes of recovery at 12. So really, in order to assess ischemic stress EKG response, 
just go for the EKG at one to three minutes of recovery in lead V5 and look at the ST segment. At that moment, this ST depression at one to three minutes of recovery in lead V5 is the most sensitive and specific for ischemia as true exertional ST depression persists at one minute of recovery at least as per that paper in Jack 2014 and it often persists for at least three minutes in recovery based on that older paper in 1985. In this Jack paper from 2014, quick ST segment recovery in less than one minute was actually as predictive of no CAD and of good long-term cardiovascular outcomes as no ST depression. In fact, none of the patients with quick ST recovery had CAD on downstream tests. Also, non-specific exertional upsloping ST depression, such as that of our patient, must worsen and become horizontal or downsloping at one to three minutes of recovery to be specific for ischemia. And you have other patients who have no significant ST depression during exercise who develop significant and ischemic ST depression in recovery. To be considered ischemic, it has to develop in the first one to three minutes of recovery. So slow upsloping ST depression, more than two millimeter at 80 millisecond of J-point that does not become horizontal or downsloping in recovery is non-specific. Its diagnostic yield differs between study, yet it may have a value in patients with a high pretest likelihood of CAD or low workload achieved, or most importantly, angina during testing. And in those patients, I may comment on a slow upsloping ST depression in my conclusion, although still the ST depression response by itself is not considered a positive ischemic ST response. In other patients with a low pretest likelihood or good workload and no chest pain, I would not comment on it. Keep in mind that in the landmark Duke treadmill score study, only horizontal or downsloping ST depression was used in the Duke treadmill score calculation, which you should all know. It's equal to exercise time on a standard Bruce protocol minus five times by the maximum ST depression, which should be horizontal or downsloping, minus four by angina score, which is zero if no angina, one if non-limiting angina, and two if it is angina that makes you stop the treadmill test. And those are the Duke treadmill scores. A score of minus 11 or less implies a high cardiovascular risk and is often triple vessel or left main disease. A score of plus five or more is a low cardiovascular risk. And a score of plus eight or more is a very low cardiovascular risk. And a low risk score of plus five to plus eight does not exclude CAD. Within this range, there may be about 20% of patients who have significant CAD. But here, take into account your pretest likelihood of CAD and the severity of exertional angina to decide whether stress imaging is the more appropriate test in case of exertional angina and high pretest likelihood probably stress imaging is preferred. Also, when the score is plus 4 to minus 10, the cardiovascular risk is intermediate, and if the patient has exertional angina, then stress imaging is recommended. Here are some other tips regarding exertional ST depression. Only two conditions, complete left bundle branch block or baseline ST depression more than one millimeter preclude stress EKG interpretation, as these conditions will routinely have worsening of the ST depression during stress and during tachycardia, regardless of the presence of ischemia. So we get a false positive result. However, exertional ST depression may be interpreted in patients with baseline ST depression less than one millimeter or patient with LVH voltage without ST depression, albeit a bit less specific. So baseline ST depression that is not pronounced does not preclude stress EKG. If baseline SC depression is present, the exertional worsening of SC depression rather than the absolute SC depression during exercise is used to assess ischemia. 
Keep in mind a point that is sometimes overlooked is that some patients get SC depression just with standing. So assess standing EKG before exercise and measure the worsening of SC depression with exercise compared to standing as your ST response. If baseline ST elevation is present, such as early repolarization, then exertional ST depression is measured in absolute values. Now, regarding the big issue of ST depression in women, yes, exertional ST depression is more common in women in general, including asymptomatic women. If you take on the street, asymptomatic women with no CAD, SC depression will be encountered on 5% of stress tests and does not per se affect the long-term prognosis or imply CAD, even when ST is depressed more than two millimeters. But we're talking about random asymptomatic women. Does this make the stress EKG useless in women? Not at all. In fact, the lack of SC depression retains a very good rule out value in women similar to men. Also, the test does have a rule in value and a prognostic and diagnostic value in symptomatic women with typical exertional angina, higher pretest probability, which is where we should do those stress tests anyway. So, a woman with exertional angina and a higher pretest. Likelihood stress EKG is a perfectly a very good test. It retains a diagnostic and prognostic value in women like in men. Also, Duke Treadmill score and exercise parameters maintain a prognostic value in women similar to that in men. So just pick the proper women for the test. Now, how about chest pain without EKG changes or with upsloping non-specific EKG changes? Chest pain does not necessarily make the stress test positive. However, chest pain that starts during exercise testing and resolve with rest or within five minutes of nitroglycerin, meaning it's a typical exertional angina, is concerning and may dictate coronary angiography, particularly if it is occurring early at stage two or less of Bruce protocol or associated with distress or diaphoresis. In fact, even with a normal ST response, a typical angina is almost as predictive of coronary events and CAD as an abnormal ST response, especially in men. At least 10 to 20% of CAD patients have chest pain during stress testing without ST changes. And that last statement is based on that study published in JAK 2014.